speak of the athletic director who took a direct shot at the CFP <laughs> committee to the head football coach. And uh, Brooks Austin and Mike Griffith joins us, join us right now. Brooks, great to see you. Mike, we talk to you every week, so we know, how, we, we know what he looks like. Yeah, I love that, Mike. They were like, we talked to the president, we talked to Kirby, now we're going to talk to Mike and Brooks. I like it. Yeah. I mean, we... <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a four-hour show. <laughs> well, Brooks, great to see you. Uh, yeah. Let's dig in because you, uh, you're quite uh, the maestro when it comes to looking at, at film, breaking it down, explaining it to the rest of us. What do you see when you see this game tomorrow? I see two offenses that are kind of struggling in very different minds, right, or very different instances. Like <laughs> Tech Tennessee, for example, they're really having a problem driving the ball down the field, certainly not having a problem running the football. I've been actually really impressed with the way Josh Heupel has kind of morphed his offensive system, playing a lot more two tight ends. Paul really kind of condensing formations when historically Heupel has been a widespread guy. He wants yeah. to spread you out the full 53 and a half and, and really throw the ball down the field, but they've struggled to do that. Obviously, on the other side of the football, Georgia's kind of struggled in various different areas throughout the season. Last week, it was the offensive line. Weeks prob or prior, it's been the wide receivers and, and maybe mix a, a couple of bad performances in there from Carson Beck as well. So very up and down performance from Georgia offensively. Tennessee's kind of struggled with the same thing all year. Paul. We got to get you on the college football playoff committee. You picked apart Georgia pretty. You know, they played some pretty good teams, Brooks. They, they had did. a little bit to do with it, they right? They did. Schedule, schedule certainly tough, man. And I, you want to talk about college football playoff, man. I, I'm wondering, and Paul, maybe you can uh, allude to this a little bit. Are they looking for the 12 best teams or are they looking for the 12 most deserving? Because if they're doing the 12 best thing, man, you're going to have a lot of SEC teams in that thing. Yeah, no, th this this committee is like, you know, the, some you go down to the Rotary Club and it's like the the the, the speakers committee. I mean, these, these are, <laughs> I don't want to insult them individually, although I will uh, in a couple of weeks, but I am shocked by what we saw. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're talking about the, you know, the executive chairman there, Ward Manuel from the University of Michigan, and you're surprised yeah, yeah. that four of the top five teams are from the Big Ten? I'm not I mean, is this really stones. a shock? This is the conference that changed their rules halfway through the season, the COVID year, to get Ohio State in the playoff. You realize that, right? The old Griff has returned. I'm just saying. <laughs> I love I mean, this. Let's, let's keep it real here. I mean, let's call it like it is. I mean, you're if you're trying to tell me that the Big Ten is four of the top five teams in college football, then you have missed the college football playoffs the last 10 years. By the way, four of the last five national champions came out of this group of 14 SEC teams, none of which are, raced in the top, are ranked in the top six. And 10 of the 20 college football championship game participants were from that 14-team group, none of which are ranked in the top six. Now, I realize it's season to season, Brooks, yeah. but it's not like the SEC has dropped off a cliff. We're talking 19 years in a row they've produced the most draft picks. So does this parity not mean anything to this committee? And, and not only that, like strength of schedule is a major thing, right? Like Georgia has played two really difficult football or three really different fo uh, difficult football he games. He should have known we were going to take the over road. the I show. Mean, this is why you don't have us on together. We'll yeah, just take it over. You can just, take the rest of the night I'm, off. We're good. Listen, you pitted I'm, I'm, two bulldogs <laughs> right next to each other. I'm, I'm going to go talk to some folks in the audience here. <laughs> But no, I mean, it's it's a uh, uh, like I said, if you're deciding on who the best teams is, I think that's very subjective or objective, whatever, which word I'm looking for there. But, you know, it's opinionated. Right. Whereas if you say these are the qualifications <laughs> for most deserving, <laughs> then it's a lot easier to, to come out here and say who you think's the most deserving based off whatever metric you create. Let's try to get Paul Feinbaum back on the set on his show. <laughs> Come on back, Paul. Paul well, no, listen, <laughs> I, uh, I am taking notes because I've, I've been on some shows this week, and I, I was kind of re re regurgitating. You've been pretty outspoken. You've, yeah. been, you've been kind of a gatekeeper here. They bring you on these big national out of New York where they only pay attention to college football one day a week, and you have to set them straight. I appreciate that. Well, First my favorite line of the Paul's week, uh, I was on Wednesday with uh, Stephen A. And, and that great college football aficionado. <laughs> Chris Mad Dog <laughs> Russo. Oh, yeah. But Russo had something that, I mean, we're talking about the same subject, and I'm going through Indiana's schedule of Florida International and Western Illinois and Charlotte, uh, and he, he just, without being prompted, said, you know what, uh, uh, South Carolina could win the Big Ten. And I said, this guy's smarter than I thought. Right. Uh, I mean, that yeah. was uh, that, that was from the from the top rope. So I'm glad to hear you guys guiding it, guiding it back on Georgia, where, yeah. where Paul yeah. started this before we kind of took it off the rails there. Sorry, Paul. I think Carson Beck has taken a lot of. Why am I here? I mean, is, there some, <laughs> is there some? I mean, it's 40 a lot degrees of outside. I could be, I could be back out having right. a bourbon at the hotel and I'm sitting there listening. 
Uh, go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm giving you some insight into Carson Beck. I mean, this I is a know. guy that kind of blew himself up on uh, social media with an NIL and kind of created this perception that I am who you think I am. I'm the nation's leading returning passer. I'm the number one Heisman candidate. And somewhere along the line, people started dropping passes. The offensive line fell apart, and Carson Beck yeah. found out he should have already known he's only as good as his supporting cast. And I think he's actually played pretty decent the last yeah. two games. I mean, he's a, I think a, he's a, played dis- great. He's a decision-making <laughs> I mean, quarterback. Right, he was stunning. I was in Oxford Let's last not week. Get carried I know away. you guys I, were I'm trying to make a point here. The, no, it, it wasn't did, on that. Where game. did he play on. well last week? Mike's got a really good point, Paul. Thanks, I mean, Brooks. he he is a, <laughs> a, a byproduct of the people. I must around have gone him. to the wrong stadium. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, Paul, what do you expect the quarterback to do when he's getting hit in two and a half seconds, man? And no, in no in, uh, uh, traditional run game at all last week against Ole Miss. Mike's on onto a good point in the sense that Carson Beck is a a, a processor. He's a great. You did not tell me you were bringing your brother here. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, but no, he's, he's a byproduct of the people around him. When you when you got a quarterback in there that's always prompt to make the right decision, if we don't give him good decisions around him, right. he's not going to have a lot of success. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking this segment off. Brooks, on, on that subject, so let's yeah. talk about the keys because we heard Doring a minute ago uh, talk about he, he feels like this is a double-digit win for Georgia. Mm. Uh, the, the line is weird, whatever that means. I don't know, but uh, you're an, a- an analytics guy. What do you see? I mean, the, the film tells me that historically a lot of teams have, you know, had to stop the run against Tennessee first. And normally teams have to dedicate a lot of extra bodies to that box to stop that run. And that's when Tennessee starts to hit people vertically behind the defense and with a lot of explosive shots. They've been unable to do that this year. And I'm always curious what happens to a football team like Tennessee when they get into a game like this where the last four or five games, Florida packed the box against them. Last week the, back, the, the box was packed against them. What does it look like when a team doesn't have to cross the box to stop the run because Georgia never has Georgia that's what they do they play the run with light box count so I'm very curious to see what happens tomorrow uh, when a one-dimensional team at this point in the season in Tennessee comes in here against a team that historically has stopped that yeah, one dimension neither one that of they've these got. set the world on fire no uh, offensively so I no. do think Georgia is getting healthy at the right time okay. up front I saw where Warren Brinson and Nazir Stackhouse two of the highest graded guys they started out a little slow Georgia's mm. gotten some depth back there Michael Williams now healthy and of course Jalen Walker has evolved into a top 10 pick. So they got some guys that can go get him. And Nico had a concussion. His ears might be ringing for a different reason so what, Saturday let's, night. Let's though. talk about that because they, we yeah. never hear much about this, but you know he's going to play. We know that. But what does that mean to you that he has been in protocol all week? I mean, to me, it's, it, it really inhibits, or at least as a play caller, it would inhibit my willingness to run him and use his legs, um, which they've actually depended upon quite a yeah. bit, particularly in short yardage situations. I think most people watching Nico this year have been really, really surprised by his ability to run the football, not just be athletic with the ball, yeah. but really develop and, and, and deliver blocks as a ball carrier as well. I've been tremendously impressed. I would imagine that takes a step back, Mike, with, with, with some type of banged up injury. With well, and, and I imagine it takes a step back because it's going to be a different Sanford Stadium. I mean, sure. earlier this year, Kirby called him out. Auburn game is kind of flat. Well, I mean, Auburn is kind of flat. Talk <laughs> about cold and freeze. I mean, what a horrible yeah. Auburn pro. Remember when they used to be something? I don't even know if you call them a rival anymore. But Tennessee's different, right? Georgia and Tennessee, I it's always that. been a bad mix. Orange and red, bad color combination. These teams, these programs, these fans, they really don't like it. I've been mm-hmm. on both sides. They really don't like each other. And Georgia is pissed off right now yeah. because they've been left out by the college football playoff committee. You're hearing Josh Heupel say this game's different. Listen, that was Lane Kiffin's line last week, Heupel. Don't mm. be stealing Lane Kiffin's material here. You don't have Lane Kiffin's talent, and you got a quarterback that's never seen a quarter. He's never seen a crowd like they're going to see under the lights at Sanford Stadium. Do you realize the last time Tennessee was here, seven false starts because of that crowd? I mean, it absolutely made a difference. They were number one in the country, weren't they? Who? Wasn't, wasn't Tennessee number one the last time? They were. They came According in? to the college football playoff committee, that they was were. Good Lord. Tennessee was number one. I just thought in case you guys forgot. The college football playoff I got a committee. picture of that that, that one week. <laughs> That's right. We've got a Tennessee alum here. we got to be careful. That, that is true. Well, uh, apparently he didn't get a degree from there. He just ran the student newspaper. So says Ryan McGee. Well, uh, <laughs> Wow. I, I don't have a, a, a journalism degree. Oh. I, do, I do have a degree from the university. Don't tell anybody, Paul. Neither do I. Yeah, a journalism degree. Oh, I have a degree in physics. Yeah. Oh. 
Are you serious? No, but joke. I thought it would sound good. <laughs> it was pretty good. You had me biting on that one. I'd rather not admit what I have a degree in. That, uh, Political ba- science. Basket weaving. Yeah. <laughs> Political science, that's my guess. Yeah, that, that's correct. Okay. I've done a lot with that political science degree. Yeah, yeah look at me. You know how to play to the crowd. Yeah. I'd vote for you, Paul. No, well, you see, you see that fine bomb Griffith in twenty eight. Oh, I like it. Oh, wow. oh, William Perry's here. Hey, he's not burying me on the cocktail party. Keep that sign up. I'm finally on board with that thing. By the way, I like that. They're building a Are stadium. You, uh, <laughs> I think we could uh, politics. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd go. Well, by the way, we both well. we both live in swing states. Is this very, my, very important. My turn to walk off the set. Yeah, you no, two I mean, get on <laughs> to your, <laughs> into your uh, congressional campaign. I, w- listen, Brooks, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you coming by. This, yeah, no uh, we, I don't know why we don't do this more often. Yeah. Ooh, me and Mike, it's the first time we've ever worked together, believe it or not. Yeah. Amazing. Well, well, we, we, will, we will do this again, and we'll, certainly with you. I don't know about Mike. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we're going to come back and talk to Mike about some things around the SEC. Uh, let's hear it for Brooks. Yeah. Yeah.